want to talk about payment closes, okay? Here's what I would like everybody to do. So, first of all, everybody switch to writing on this, okay? And the reason why, you now you can use that, that smaller piece of paper, but what I'd like you to do, this is like about the size of a piece of paper that you guys use when you negotiate, right? Okay, this is like, who in here doesn't have a worksheet that's blank on the back? I mean, is there anybody that like has, you know, like presenting numbers on, you know what I'm saying? Whether you do four square, they pencil on it. I really don't care what you get, but on the back side, it may have like arbitration or something like that. Like, does everybody have a blank piece, a piece of paper on the back of their deal? Yeah? Beautiful. Okay. So let's, let's take this piece of paper and here's what I want to do. I want to challenge you to stay up with me because remember how I said I want you to make a video? The video that I want you to make, this is where you're going to raise your gross. This is where it's all going to come in. This piece of paper is magic, okay? In a seated position, everything is written. I want to tell you this, okay? If I could do this real fast, and this is going to be cool, but I, I, this is kind of where we're going to go at the end, is that if I pulled up, let's just say Frankie, and I put Frankie on this board over here, and I was over here, and I said, all right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to do a payment close, okay? And you're going to do one. And let's say we had a divider where you couldn't hear him or hear me, okay? But at the end of it, you got an opportunity to walk up. You would look at his piece of paper, at his board, and you look at my board. You should be able to read the map, what I did. That's all that I ask. If when you're done negotiating, if your piece of paper looks like this, If this is what your paper looks like, that ain't going to work. Who can follow that? Nobody. And you may say, hey, Andy, is this real? No, this is real, real. If you guys want to make a ton of money, <clears throat> investors, advisors, guys that are making it just, I mean, when I say big, big money, they write everything. They close. This is their tool. Can I ask you this? When I'm writing, do you guys follow whenever I use this? Okay. This is your magic wand. Okay. When I'm talking, it used to amuse me when I was sitting there and I'd talk to customers and I'd literally be doing this, right? And I'm knee to knee with them, I'm right around, but I would do this. And they would not be looking here anymore, they would watch my pen. They would follow my pen and everything that I did with it. I started realizing, man, they love seeing what you write down. And here's the deal, just like I tell you that 90% of what you write down, you'll retain. If you don't write anything down, you'll retain 30% of it. You have to write this whole thing down. But you have to understand that you're not writing it down for you. You're writing it down for them. So if I ask a customer, when you this, but I say, hey, how much do you roughly spend a week in gas? Just answer any question. How much do you roughly spend a week in gas? Cool. Look, what does that say? You can follow me. Was that hard? Did it take very long? And you'd agree there's four weeks in a month, right? Cool. Can you follow me? And now watch this. So roughly you're saying that you roughly spend Does that make sense? You see how that is there? This is the one thing that's lacking with guys. You hear me? Like you hear me physically? Um, maybe you're getting crazy back there? Okay. You hear me physically, right? Like what I'm saying? but your customer can't follow you. Now, when I tell you this, listen, if you underestimate this writing point, you will never max out your full potential, okay? I mean, I'm just gonna tell you, you're gonna get to the end of this close, you're gonna try to close a customer, and what's gonna happen is your customer's gonna say, no thanks. You know why? They're not where you are. If you were following me to Dallas, right, and I just raced off and left you, what would happen? I would end up in Dallas and you wouldn't be there behind me. That's kind of what happens when what I see with salespeople. You guys assume that the customers know what's going on and that they should be smart enough to stay with you, but the fact is they don't buy cars. They're honestly never been in a dealership with a guy who even negotiates this way. They have salesmen that make points. They tell them you know, what they should do, but they don't write anything down, okay? 
So everything that we'll do starting from now until the end of the day. So like I said, the last part of today is going to go like this. I'll team everybody into like groups of three or four. Okay. However we do it. And we'll line everybody up on the board. And I'm going to say, all right, check this out. We're going to role play, right? And I'm going to say, all right, this is the car we're trading. This is the one we're buying, right? I want you to work it out and go. And you will be my guys, right? So I'll say, all right, come on, check this out. All right, so listen, here's the deal. And I'm going to close you and I'm going to write it down. And when you're done, I want the two people to be honest and say, hey, that was great. I want to see progress. I want to see how fast you can learn. Is that fair? I want you to challenge yourself in this time that we're together. Remember I said we'd get a little bit uncomfortable? We're going to get that way at the end, okay? But I want you to write everything down. That's number one, okay? This is very easy, but it's also very complicated because some reason salesmen want to shortcut everything, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to erase that real quick. Let's start. Okay, so everybody start. I don't care what it is. I don't care what the car is. I always use, listen, and when I say this, this may be the oldest thing that you've heard me use forever, but this is what makes me more money than anything in the world. Watch this. Do trucks get better gas mileage? I mean, today than they did like back in 2012? Do they get better gas mileage? Okay. Pick up every freaking dollar that you can that you see. Don't leave a dollar on the table. Not one dollar, okay? At the end of this close, you may need $40, and do you know what? You had $40 you could have picked up because you didn't use it. So I'll give an example. If a guy's trading in a 2012 Dodge Ram, right? And just write this. And this is just going to be a gas example. And I'm, going to, I'm not going to go like a Honda Civic to a truck, right? Everybody knows they could kill that one. Let's just talk about how the most minimal amount of money, right? And we can go through a bunch of pieces of paper here and we can keep rolling through it. A guy's trading a 12 Dodge Ram. And, you know, let's just say that it's got 85,000 miles. And... Here's the kicker. He's buying an 18 Ram, okay, that's got 15,000 miles. When that guy's trading that truck and he's going to that truck, here's the kicker. Let's say he's at 400 a month now. This is what he's paying, okay? What's your customer paying? 400 bucks a month. What is he buying? 12 Ram, or, or what does he own? Uh, a 12 Ram with 85,000 miles. He's buying a 2018 Ram, right? And let's say the payment's going to be 600 a month. What does this customer always say? I want to keep the same payment. Right? Who says that? Everybody. everybody. So I'm, not, I, I'm going to go with the, the, the simplicity of like, this is what everybody's telling us. So we all, I want to keep the same payment. That doesn't happen. Okay? Well, so I want to show you what would be the first thing that I would attack on this deal. Well, listen, I'm going to ask, does this truck, and, and you may say, Andy, that truck doesn't get a lot better gas mileage than the newer one, but would you agree with new, you know, uh, I would say, gosh, what do you call it, redesigned body style, you know, new, new technology, right? I mean, do they get, does it get any better gas mileage at all? If it does, I mean, I'm going to ask, who in here is familiar Dodge? Frankie, you're familiar Dodge? You're familiar Dodge? Okay. Let me ask you this. Is the gas mileage maybe, I don't know, five miles to the gallon better or like three or four? What is it? Cool. If this truck gets five miles to the better gallon on gas, right? Listen, when I'm negotiating, okay, and I'm just going to kind of, I want you to think about this. You might look at that and say, that's not a gas close. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. If it gets five miles a gallon better, who's the expert? You are. If you're the expert, it's your job to call it out. So listen, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, and look, let's just do this. 400 a month, or sorry, 600 a month, sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up for you. And remember how I talk, I'm just going to say this presenting the pencil part, so you guys will know this. You guys may think this sounds silly, but anytime I present something, I always do it like this. Okay, guys, I got great news. Right here, 600 a month, just sign here, I'll get your new car cleaned up. Hey, and I apologize, I forgot to ask you. When would you like to set your first payment due? So you want to set it towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month. What's going to work best for you and your family? My bad. I didn't even ask you guys that. Middle of the month. Cool. Like the 10th or the 15th? 10th. Cool. The 10th. <clears throat> awesome. <clears throat> my bad. Mr. Customer, sign right here. Just let my manager know you want your payment due around the 10th. I appreciate your business so much. That is my goal. I want to move him through that. Okay? I want to not let him even get it. Did, did, did I even let the bell come out to negotiate with me? No. Watch this. This could be the difference. 
Which one do you think would look better? And let's just talk about this since we're about to get into negotiating. Watch. Which one, I'm just asking you, which one do you like better? Hey guys, I got great news. 600 a month, you just sign there. I'll get your new car cleaned up. Do you like that? Or do you like this? Hey guys, I got great news. 600 a month, if you just sign here, I'll get your new car cleaned up. Hey, and I apologize, I forgot to ask you. When were you guys wanting to set your first payment due? Towards the beginning of the month? The middle of the month? What's gonna work best for you and your family? And I'm sorry about not asking you that. When would be best? Stop. That right there allows them what? To answer a question that has nothing to do with what I just presented. Why? Because what I'm hoping to do, my goal is, guys, stuff's more expensive. Okay? Do you think that guy thought he was going to get a $400 payment on an 18 truck trading in a 12? No. No, he knew he was going to pay more. You know what he's hoping? He's hoping for you to play it wrong and you ask him, are you okay with this? And of course he's going to tell you no, he's not. And then he's going to tell you he wants to be at 400. Yes. Yeah. Of course, if there's a down payment, I would have dis I would disclose that at the same time. Look, if your guy needs 1500 down, it would be like, guys, I got great news, 1500 down, 499, and then you would have just moved into that. You know what I'm saying? But I want to tell you, this is just all about presentation, okay? So if there's a price on the piece of paper, as a matter of fact, I don't ever say the word price. So if there's a pr if there's a price on the piece of paper, when I bring it into you, I'll say, guys, great news. And I know it says 189, right? I know it says 600 a month, okay? I know it says 1500 down. What I know is that I need to be at 1500 down and 600 a month. Does that make sense? I'm not worried about the price. I don't really care about the price, okay? And these are for payment customers. If a guy's coming in and he says, hey, I'm writing a check for the car, right? You're not really presenting this guy on payments. But remember what I said? I said seven, eight, nine out of 10 customers are worried about payments. So you guys are gonna be disclosing this nonstop, okay? So, what's up? So when you, at my dealership, when you do the first pencil, it has like two terms, so like 60, 72 months, and then it has zero down, 1,000 down, 2,000 down, 3,000 down, and then I'll show the different monthly payment. I would start with the, with the lowest payment, okay? With the most amount down, or if your customers are like dead adamant and they've told you nine million times they don't have any money, money down, I would start with the highest payment with no money down. Does that make sense? I mean, look, do you guys think that you have to present everything that your customer, your manager puts on his piece of paper? Most managers like just like, they just like doing stuff to do it because they're dumb. It's, it's just and I'm not saying that's bad, no, 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 it's not better. But it's just, you know your customers, right? Look, you can work a four square, you can do whatever. Here's the deal, matter of fact, and, and this isn't bad, I'm not teaching you guys bad habits, okay? But I'm teaching you like how I used to work, is that look, I would look at my piece of paper, i know where I need to be, and I would do this. Because honestly, I don't play that game that other salesmen play with their, sales, with their customers. I just set it down and say, guys, I got great news. Your payment's gonna be 600 a month, I'm gonna need $1,500 cash down, and I apologize, I forgot to ask you, when did you want to set your first payment due? And I would just try to go for it. Cool? Awesome. Sign it right here. Thank you so much for your business. I don't like having that sit out. Does that make sense? Anybody that's really good at sales, they don't like this. You know why? This piece of paper, it's not very friendly. People are staring at this paper when I walk in. That's why if I keep it like this, you don't know what it is. Okay? And your managers may say, hey, I don't like that. You don't have to tell them how you present, okay? Bottom line is, they want to see the results on how you present. Am I right? Do you care if your salesman goes, do you care if a guy goes and closes a 10 pound deal if he did it standing on his head or on his feet? No, you don't care, you just care that he closed it. That's what it's about, okay? So since people are so interested and I'm sure that they had some dealings, I feel like this piece of paper is made to negotiate. So I actually don't like it. I would actually rather just take it, fold it in half like this and then go down and do it like this. And then guess what? I kind of know where I'm at, I know how much money down I need, and I'm good to go. Watch this, if a customer says to you, because we're about to get into this, hey, I don't have any money down, okay? Look, do you fight the money down first, or do you fight the payment first? You can't fight both of them at one time. I'm gonna ask you this, how many times can you close a car deal, right, without having any cash down? A lot of the times, right? Okay, so you've got to decide. Your manager hits you with 5,000 down, right? Think about this, 600 a month, okay? 
Now look at this. You're saying, guys, I got great news. 5,000 down, 600 a month. First of all, you know your customer over here had 500 down, right? And then also he wants to be at 400 a month, right? Where do you, do you, do you want to make this a bad process or do you want to do this quick and easy and get it moving? Look, here's what I'll do. Guys, I got great news. 5,000 down, 600 a month, sign here. I apologize, forgot to ask you. I'll go into my deal. They say, hey, Andy, I tried to move through it. I, I knew that it probably wasn't going to work, but I tried to do it. They say, hey, Andy, there's no way. We, first of all, we don't have that kind of money down. Secondly, there's no way we can afford a payment like that. All right, cool. So check this out. Here's what I'm going to do. All right, let's talk about the cash down in a minute. I'm not even worried about that, okay? Let's do this. Do you notice how I just drew a line through it and moved? Okay, I don't want to talk about that right now. How, the guy that chases two rabbits loses both, okay? You can't chase the cash down and the payment. Are you, are you running to run your customer off? I mean, are you, honestly, I can't even negotiate that. They teach you you can beat them up for the cash, get all the payment, and then go to the payment. Listen, here's what I know, is that if I can take the $600 payment and get them to okay that, then at the end, I can say, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my boss at the 600 payment. I'm going to see if he can help out with just that 500 down at that payment. And normally it's like a teeter-totter. When this goes up, that goes down. This goes down, that goes up. But let me go to back for you here, and I'll be right back with you, okay? And guess what? If you bring back your manager a full payment, most of the time, I'm going to be honest with you, they can figure out how to max out your deal from there. And they may ask for another 500 down, they may ask for another 1,000, you may go back in. But really, most deals are made about right there. Okay, does that make sense? I mean, look, most people, they don't have 5,000 down. Okay, I'm just saying they really don't. What's up, John? That's okay. No and yes. <laughs> okay? Well, let me explain what I mean here, okay? Is that, first of all, it depends on who your managers are, okay? The, the number one thing you need to know is that you, you better get that payment. Okay, do you, do you think that people have the ability to give more per month or more cash out of their, out of their bank they don't have? More per month, okay? So you have to play the more per month game every time. Now listen, you may have to go back in in a minute, right, and explain to them that, look, remember I was talking about it was like a teeter-totter, right? If we're gonna do the 500, this is actually gonna go up, but I'm gonna say to you also another way that you're gonna be saving so it'll be easy for you to afford. Okay, and you may have to go back into the payment, but I'm going to tell you this. Look, if, if Ron right here has 500 down, okay, maybe Ron has 1,000, right? But honestly, like, I have a better chance of taking Ron to 800 a month than I do on beating Ron for another three grand out of his pocket. Okay, and I mean it when I say this. If people have to have money down, listen, I said this word, have, have. They have to have the money down. My biggest deal is I can tell when somebody is out of money. If somebody doesn't have any more money and you keep asking them for money, the sale's going to end pretty quick, okay? Because there's nothing really to talk about. There's no money to give. I'm out of money. But I can always get more payment, right? Here's what I would tell you. If you have to have money, always go to a credit card, okay? Just always go to a credit card. I always go to my manager and I say, hey, look, we have to have money. I'm, they're all out of money. They don't have money. Is there any available balances, any any money, is there $800 that's free on a Capital One credit card? Is there any credit card that isn't maxed out that they have? If they have to have money down. And then he'll say, uh, yeah, well, they got a Cap One card, they got a zero balance on a thousand bucks. Boom, hey, great news. We're gonna take the deal with the 500 cash down at 600 a month, but I'm actually gonna need 1500 down. So that Cap One credit card you have, we're just gonna put the thousand dollars on it and then that way you can pay it back off as we go, but we can get you in your vehicle today and you don't have a first payment due for a month and a half, okay? And then guess what? That's how you're gonna close them, okay? So if you have to have money down, go to your credit card, okay? And your managers will be able to tell you if there's any of them that don't have balances. Guys, credit cards are an untapped market, okay? They're easy to take, you can swipe them, they're not a debit card, they really don't need money in the bank. But then again, 
That's just if they have a credit card, and if they have a credit card there for availability. But you can think that's a hole that you can take the money. My biggest deal is that, so the way lending works now is obviously cash down is king, and it helps you make a lot more money. But there's a lot of cases, right, that if you can take the payment, if you guys could, if, if you guys were the worst people in the world about getting more down payment, but you could close everybody full pencil on all the payments, uh, you guys would be making three, 400000 a year. I'm just going to tell you, like, that's a no-brainer. If you could first payment close every single person that you talk to, I mean, you know, I, I just want to ask, like, I mean, is there anybody in here that, um, that has been in finance other than Frankie? No? Just Frankie? You've been finance. Look, listen. You know the way Carrie. The ter when I talk about Carrie, Carrie works like this. Unless there's a big issue and like you've got a bad credit customer and they have to have like 500 or 1,000 down, most of the time your managers can leverage the payment. If you can come back with the payment that your manager writes down on a piece of paper every time, you'll be your manager's very best friend. He will love you. He will. He will fall in love with you overnight. He'll be taking you to dinner every single night because you will make the store so much money, okay? So I would just say, focus on the payment part, but understand this, the cash down deal, don't fight the cash down ba battle. Don't do it, save it for the end. Close them on the payment, and then at the end, say, let me go to bat, right? Obviously for the 5,000, you said you have 500, I'll go to bat for the 600 a month and the 500 down. You have to win a small battle and move on, okay? If you're gonna try to close the cash down and the payment on one pencil, Dude, you're grinding them to a pulp. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to understand, customers are really s sensitive nowadays. So, I mean, I'm not even good enough to do that. I could tell you I could do it, but honestly, me going down and doing it, it, it doesn't work in my benefit. Like I would, I'd be screwing myself. Okay? What? I, I run most people's credit if I smell that they don't have great credit in the fact find qualify, right? Remember I said like, hey, let's go over here and do this. You know, remember that question I said, hey, if there's any reason that you, is there any reason why you think you wouldn't be able to finance with a primary lender? Well, I had this, when I hear that well, I'm like, okay, all right, we're good. I got you, don't worry about it, we're good. I'm gonna take care of that. I had a lady just like you yesterday, same situation. Let me tell you what I did with her, okay? She's happy now, she's in her new car, she's cool. You notice how I don't tell them what I'm gonna do, but I tell them what I did with somebody else? That's like one of my favorite closes is talking about somebody else, okay? Because it shows you, it shows so much more because do you want someone to tell you that they're, that, you know, like, do you want me to say to you, hey, I'm the best? Or is it better if Lewis tells you that I'm the best? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, a, it's called like social proof close. Like you gotta just have that social proof, you know what I'm saying, from other people, okay? So let's, 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 let's get moving, go ahead. I was gonna say, would you erase that and go to one more time? No, I'm going to go through it. I just want to, well, no, I'm going to go through it. I just want to talk about the cash down part. Like, please pick a road and go with it, okay? You know what I'm saying? Don't try to catch both of them. Even when somebody's financing a car? Yeah. Until they get to finance, they have finance or So that's a different deal. So when we get to price, you'll have to be really good about handling price. But I would say this, if I was a customer, I was like, well, I don't know, it, it sounds fine, but what's the payment? Like I'm asking you, like in your store, if I'm like, you bring out $20,000, right? And I'm like, okay, that sounds cool, but, or I don't know, like I, I, I can't tell you if I can do 20,000 or not, what's my payment? Don't they ask you that, like what's your payment? Well, I can't tell you, but, but I wanna be at 300, so will my payment be at 300? Oof. Oof. <laughs> to me, that sounds like, uh, let, me get, let me get your new car cleaned up in a minute um, and, and build a packet and send you back to this guy to go talk to him about payments to see if you want to buy it. I'm not really sure. But bottom line is, we'll work on that. Every store is different, okay? Hey, guys, and by the way, I can tell you this. There's a lot of stores that everybody's in, okay? And I'm not telling anybody to go to any other store, but some of you guys may be in the wrong store. I hate to say that, okay, and I'm not about switching it, okay, I want you guys to stay where you're at, but dude, if you want to be really good at making a lot of money, okay, I'm just, I'm going to use him as an example, okay, your money is made, right, by you, by doing a good job. Now, if, 
your customer, right? Do you even have the chance to close somebody? I mean, $20,000, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to make a $5,000 deal, can you make a $5,000 deal by going and closing somebody on price? No, you close them on payment, but you just close the price. Does that make sense? Okay, if somebody's not writing a check for the car, how, I mean, I'm not writing a check for the car. So when we talk about price, again, I'm not writing a check for the car. Like, I don't know. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, payments are really big. Now, we'll, we'll talk and work through it a little more, but when I say this to you, like there may be a store that's close to you that like will help you earn and make more money. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, it, there's, listen, there's process, and do you work for a Honda store? Okay, watch. You know why, I, I, and, and I, I think I remember that, but my point is these, these three lines, you, you work for a Toyota store, right? But you guys work cash down payments, right? Yeah, so Honda and Toyota, these, these types of stores have had a lot of managers that have been in there for a very long time. You know what that means? That means that in 2005, right when I was a salesman, I was telling my managers, like I would have a manager write down, all right, we're gonna sell them this car, it's gonna be $30,000, that's gonna be the price of it. And I'm gonna give them 10,000 for their trade and that's gonna be a $20,000 difference. Right, does that make sense? And then plus their payoff, because they have a payoff, right? And their payoff is, let's say, $14,000. And he's like, all right, go close that. And I'm like, what? what how, what's the payment? He's like, it doesn't matter. Go, clo go close them on the trade difference, and then we'll handle the payments. I'm like, no, not going to happen. I'm not doing that. You know why? Because here's the deal. They want to be at 600 a month, okay? I'm sharing this with you. That is an 850 payment, okay? I am the only guy that can close those people at 850 a month. So if I go down here and sign, they're going to ask me, well, is my payment 600? And I'm going to say, well, I, I don't know. But when you go to finance, they'll tell you. <laughs> Listen, all of a sudden, I've worked for three hours and I'm discredited, right? So you know what I, you know what I did? And I'm just going to tell you guys, okay? And this is, I'm not saying this is what you need to do. I worked for some managers that had some low-level thinking. They had been in managers since the 80s. Okay, you know what I did? I quit my job, and I went across town. Okay, and I obviously found another job before I quit it. But I went across town, and I said, hey, I'm a high-caliber salesman. I love closing. I love negotiating. I want to work cash down payments, right? I work at a store that works trade difference. I don't like it. I'm not wanting my F&I guys to be responsible for the money that I have to make, right? I want to make my own money. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, guess what? I don't want to work like this. I want to work for some managers that want to teach me how to make 250000 a year. Well, guess what happened? They hired me. My next month, I ended up making like $20,000 selling cars. I knew what I was worth. I had to go to a different store and work with a different group of managers that worked that same way. Like everybody's in different, like are your desk guys pretty cool? They work with you pretty cool? That's a blessing. That's a gift. If you have this every time you go to the desk with your managers telling you how smart they are and how stupid you are, right? Like, I want you to understand. I want you to get real smart and I want you to understand how to negotiate. But like, if that continues, like you probably need to part ways and move on, okay? And this isn't about that. Like, I just want to talk to you on your deal. Like, there isn't no, Frankie, is there any way that we can make money like this? That's it. Yeah, unless they're writing a check for the car, right? And now in your store, right, like Luke, right? Luke works at Reynolds, right? And at Reynolds, your customers are customers that have always bought there. So most of your people do what? They write checks. Write checks. You know why? Our penetration is 50%. There you go. I, but, I know his, but so I know his store. I know how his store works. So since I know that his people are writing checks, Luke could get a pencil like this and then go out and say, guys, well, what you owe, plus what you're getting for your trade, and this is the price, that's what you're going to be writing the check for, plus the doc fee. Sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up. He goes straight into closing them. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's his system. Okay, but if your guys are talking about payments and stuff like that, and you have desk guys that aren't wanting to talk about payments, like, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough place to be in, okay? And look, it just takes a minute to understand. Maybe, maybe because you're, you're new or something, like, your managers are taking you know, they're, they're not taking you seriously and they're screwing with you. I'm just telling you, like, they'll do that. Because if they're not writing a check for the car, let's not talk about price too much, right? I mean, it has nothing to do with it.
Okay? You know what I'm saying? Like people don't look at the end contract loan. Okay? The end game to people buying a car is not something that they want to look at. If, do you think that people would be buying cars left and right if they looked at how much money they were making in payments and interest at the end of every loan if you disclose that up front? No, you, you would walk over, you'd walk 75% of them off the lot if you disclose that off front. But that's part of life, right? That's just the way loans work. If you went and bought a $300,000 mortgage, at the end of the mortgage loan, how much money are you borrowing? $800,000? I don't want to see that number. If that was on the first piece of paper when I bought a mortgage, I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't be buying one. I'd back out and say, hey, I'm going to rethink like, borrowing this kind of money. But guess what? If it's on the last page when you're, when you're moving in your home, you're like, okay, well, we'll pay it off early. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's certain things in the car business you don't talk about up front. Um, what's up? And we'll start. We'll start. That way we can start rolling fresh. In my store, if that RAM 18, uh, the, the, the payment is 600, I would present numbers at 800 or 900. So how will you negotiate those payments? Even, 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 you don't, even if it's not the right payment, you will bump it out the way you can. You mean they're just throwing out silly numbers? Mm -hmm. like, so I would just tell you to get as, to get as much as you can get then. It's okay. Here's the deal. With, with what I do, and like I said, like what we're going to do is that I just want you to see how to bump somebody. So if they throw out a crazy number, go get that crazy number. If you come back with that number, can you imagine how much money you're going to be making? I mean, you're going to be making crazy money. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was telling you, like, I want you to understand, like, if you've got managers that are throwing out giant pencils, that means you actually got some creative, good managers, okay? Does that make sense? Like, and, and some people, they see it wrong. Like, man, my managers, you know, they don't, they don't work my deal right. No, you got good managers. If your managers are hitting you hard, that means they want to hit your paycheck hard too, okay? You just got to know how to close it, okay? So um, let's, 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 let's go to this little RAM system here and talk about gas. And like I said, we talked about presentation, right? Okay, now let's move on. Let's talk about when somebody says the payment's too high, all right? First thing I would tell you, and, and find a piece of paper, like you said, something you can write on, and then we'll roll until we start eating. I want you to do this. This 12 Dodge Ram at 400 a month, 18 Ram, 600 a month. This truck gets a little bit better gas mileage. In this book, you see this word track book? We got an overcoming objections book and we got a word track book. These right here, we don't have to go through them now, but you can go through every single one of them and every word track that I use is right here in this word track book. And a word track kind of looks like this. Um, okay, Mr. Customer, 600 months, sign here. Guy says, no, there's no way in hell I can't afford that. I always say, I understand, right? Isn't that what closers do? You always agree, and then you handle it. I understand. That's fair. How close to 600 can you come? Guy says, 400. Awesome. Okay, now, Mr. and Mr. Customer, right? Watch, what do I do right here? Since I don't have gas or I can have gas, I would say this. Remember how I always talk about get how much more they said they could pay? If I can get that number, and I'm, I'm not trying to confuse you, I'll write it here, which means this. If a guy's paying, two, if a guy's paying 250 a month, and he says he can go to 350 right? How much more can that guy afford? 100 bucks more, okay? So when I flip my paper over, I'll always write that 100 more at the top. When I run through a full payment close here in a second, we'll go A to Z, I'm gonna show you how to use that number, okay? Because a lot of people will give you a little bit, right? Okay, this guy, I'm just talking about, he wants to stay at the same, so I'm not gonna use this, but let's just say this guy says, hey, I'm paying 400, I wanna keep it at 400, payment 600. Guess what, you can do a real quick gas close and pick up some fast money. I'll say, I get that, that's fair. Okay, so at 400 a month, boom, I'll flip it over, I'll ask this question, and I'll, I'll everybody like, I'm gonna draw a, a box here, we'll act like this is the back side of the sheet of paper. That's the payment you pay to the bank. When I take the $200 you spend a month in gas and the $400 you pay to the bank, $600 bucks is how much it costs to really own your old vehicle between gas and payment each month. Does that make sense? That's the real money leaving the bank. Does that make sense? And guess what? They'll say yes. And at that point, that right there, it just shares with you that that's actually what it costs total ownership to drive their car between gas and payment. Now what I'll do, and we'll, 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 we'll finish this and then we'll run through everything and we'll go eat. But I always say this, and then on your new car over here, wouldn't you agree? I say better gas mileage, less money spent? Sure, watch how fast that is. I don't have to say anything, I say better gas mileage, less money spent. This is a newer truck, it's got new technology, it's gonna get better gas mileage. You're the expert, just call it out. You see this 50 bucks you spend a week in gas? Guess what, on your new car, doing the same driving, 
it's going to be 40 a week in gas. That right there was simple. I just made that statement. I said it. We're done. And guess what? You'd agree there's four weeks in a month, right? Just like we did over here. So that shows me roughly 160 a month in gas is how much it's going to cost to own your brand new truck a month in gas. And if I take the $600 payment that you're paying now to the bank on your new truck, that would basically show me $760 a month is how much it will cost to own your brand new truck. And then at that point, I want you to understand, remember how his head here, here, here? I would say, so I'm going to take the $760 it costs to own your new truck, right? And I'm going to take the $600 that you're paying now on your old truck, and basically what that shows me is that what? It looks like the new truck is actually only going to cost about $160 more, but it's actually not. And then I would move straight over here to, because they have no warranty, right? And I would start going into my warranty clothes. Does that make sense? But did you see on this truck that this truck is a 12 Ram? That's an 18 Ram. This truck right here, that guy spends 50 bucks a week in gas. And all I did is that I just moved, moved it to $40 a week in gas. Because I said better gas mileage, less money spent. That means you're going to be spending less money each month. Well, guess what? That right there, that just got me 40 bucks. So, I mean, going back to this, you're originally, they're wanting to be at 400 and you were at 600. Well, guess what? Now, you've already taken this and you just picked up 40 bucks by using this gas. Dude, you think I can pick up 160 bucks on a warranty in two seconds? Yeah, that's easy, man. And that's what we're going to do. When we come back from lunch, what I'm going to do is I'll draw one car here, one car here, and we'll just run down them in each box. But the biggest kicker is, this is all I care about, is everybody, as I'm doing this, like I want you guys to write on your own pieces of paper because what I care about is you writing it down. And when I'm with the customer and I'm writing it down real nice and neat next to them, I am moving very fast, okay? I'm like, hey, better gas mileage, less money spent, right? And just like we did over here, this is, and I'm moving. And the whole time, I'm like moving my hand on them. I got eye contact. I'm moving my pen. I'm engaged with them. I mean, like I'm telling you, I am going to close them at 600 a month. That is easy. This car deal, I knew already I was going to bump the guy 40 bucks a month, right? Just in gas. No matter what number he told me he spent a week in gas, no matter what number, I don't care if he said 100 or he said $10. Whatever it is, I was going to cut it, right? Not cut it in half, but I was going to cut it some. And I cut it some, and then I take that and pick that payment up. Now, when I take and I take the ownership cost of this and the ownership cost of that, now I'm down to, it looks like the truck's only 160 more. Well, when we first started, it looked like the truck was 200 more. And then once I'm done with the warranty close, I'm like, it looks like the truck's actually saving you money. You see how we're just moving in that direction? And did I say one time, could you do up to, could you do, listen, Mr. Customer, could, I, I know you want to do 400, but could you do up to maybe four, 450, no more than, meet me in the middle? Could, did I do any of that? No. So don't negotiate. This is money justification. And I know that, you know, there's been lots of YouTube videos that I've put out on money justification. Look, I want to show you every single way that I do it, but I want you guys to be able to do it. That's the biggest deal. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys have to be able to go back into your store and when you start negotiating, you have to be able to kill it on this. Okay? Uh, go ahead before we go to lunch. Well, you mean, you mean, let's say like this truck was out of warranty? Well, like the, the, that scenario is, is not really in play because the guy showed up at your desk. He already knows he's getting ready for 2012. He, he test drove the Ram and now he's sitting in your GMC store. He just wants to know, compare now this year to the Ram that I looked at. It's not, they're not competing. If, if they were both the same, which one would you own? No, I'm just asking you. I'm asking you, if they're both yeah, the same, I which one would you own? No, no, but I don't care which one you say. What I'm asking is which one, if they were both the same price, which one would you want to own? Okay. Which one? Sierra. That's worth the deal on the Sierra. Now I'm going to close you on the Sierra. But it really doesn't matter, though, because honestly, I really don't care. I'm just going to make this point. Like, it, no matter what it is you have for sale, 
I'm taking it to a point that you've already handled that and then you're negotiating that truck that they've chosen, right? And I'm showing you how to pick the money up on that truck. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? But if somebody ever picks out two cars and you're going back and forth, just say, hey, listen, if they both cost the same money, right? Which one would you own? And then guess what? They'll tell you and you say, awesome. Then it sounds like we've selected the one we want. And then if they say, well, I know it's more than, okay, cool. So you're saying you'd rather have the other one then. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I mean, I'm going to move you, right, from one to the other. But I'm going to let you make the choice because the last thing I'm going to do is make it for you and then me end up working a whole car deal on the wrong car. You know what I'm saying? But I just will tell you when I say this, like this right here, it's just writing it down and it's physically doing money justification, okay? And really, and this is what's going to be cool. You, so you watch me and you say like, he's like, hey, you know, like I, I get that. Later today, you're going to be up here doing it, okay? And that's what I care about. And when I say this, whether you're great at it and you come up here and you're like, boom, I'm like, damn, good job, man. That was amazing. All I care about is progress, okay? All I care about is you guys getting better every single time. And what I care about is in 30 days from now, I want you guys to physically be so good that like, you're not like a second rated version of me. You're just, you're a first rated version of yourself that's a new deadly closer, right? If you can close this way, okay, you can close anyone in your store, anybody. Other salesmen, they don't know how to do this. They have no clue. They will never have a clue either. They don't negotiate this way. Yes, they could watch a video and say, oh, I can see value in that, but they won't do it and that's why they stay broke. I want you guys to change the way you work since salesmen suck. You guys can go out and just crush them, man. If somebody comes across your table and they've been and they said, "Hey, well, we've been at three other stores," I'm like, "Yes." You know what I'm saying? Because I know the way they negotiate in other stores. Nobody's ever even seen this style of closing, okay? And and if they have seen it, you think that they learned it? No. They're like, "Oh, that makes sense." And they may say something like, "Well, my truck gets better gas, and it's got a warranty. Can't you see paying 600 for that?" You think that's going to close anybody? No, you have to close it down yourself, write it down and be deadly at closing it, okay? So whether you have a sales team in the future one day or this is just, just you selling forever, you have to be great at writing stuff down because this is where the money's going. For my life, for my kids and for my wife, I level up, level up, level up, level up. Let's get to work, 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 work. Let's get to work. So I'm asking, work, like, work, I say this, you know, this deal, like if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you, like, challenge yourself please like take the challenge to make yourself better okay i don't know who the best closer in this room would be but it really doesn't matter what matters is that everybody in this room makes at least two hundred thousand dollars next year and that's the magic number and has a happy life and a fulfilled life you know what i'm saying and some of you guys have kids some of you don't you know if we talk to like Dia uh, um, diaka back here you know he uh he's he's got a 17 year old right and you don't want to work your life away, right? But right now you're working your life away, right? Yeah, but you don't have any more at home, right? No. So they're all out. You know, so you need to get out there and see these kids, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, hey, hey. And did you guys know, hey, hey, Diaka, you know he's a book writer, right? No, nobody knew that? Yeah, he, he's like the R. Kelly who's not the R. Kelly. You know what I'm saying? Right? You know what I'm saying? Not, who's not the R. Kelly? Yeah. No, no, no. But he, he writes love books, right? Like for real. Like he goes and does book signing and all kinds of stuff. You notice how everybody's a little bit unique? Everybody's super cool. I love learning from different people. Like he, he's a book writer, you know what I'm saying? And I've seen just, I kind of went to his website and I was like, dang, dude, you know, like this is like Oprah pimp status stuff, man. I mean, like he, he teaches you how to have a relationship and I don't really know what it's about, but I just kind of, I haven't read one of the books, but I was just looking at the covers and you know, he's like on a white rug laying down, you know what I'm saying? And, and I was like, hey man, is this rated R? You know? Uh, so I was just saying that like everybody is a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like I, I talked to him last night, he gave me a book, you know, he, he's a preacher, right? You know, he, he preaches twice a month. Isn't that cool? You know, he's on the city, or was it the city council? Is that right? Um, uh, county supervisor. County supervisor. I mean, isn't that cool? Like, everybody's different. You know what I'm saying? Um, but every, like, when I say this, like, John, John was a mechanic, right? And he quit, and like I told you guys earlier, his mechanic job, which was a guaranteed good hourly pay rate to, to go be a sales guy. 
dude, like everybody's just wanting to elevate up. So I want everybody to kind of watch what everybody's doing because we all started together here, right? You know what I'm saying? I have goals, right? Okay, and it's not about me. I mean, I literally, I say this in three to five years, I wanna be the best sales trainer in the country. I mean, I wanna be everywhere, but I really wanna be real and really change people and I wanna help. So when this deal's done and we're over today and everything's done, we're gonna spend time together and I wanna make sure I can help each one of you, but like, I wanna stay very close with you guys for months and months and months and months until you get it down to where you're at where you need to be, so you're killing it. So. I just want to tell everybody, like, when we go to do these videos, like, there's going to be some people that are going to opt out, you know, and I don't want to say that in a bad way, but just some people will be like, man, you know, I'm too busy for this. Guys, don't be too busy to get better, please, okay? There's nothing more important than self-investment. The last thing you want to do is go blend back into a car dealership, okay, and become like everybody else, all right? The only way that I was able, able to just keep breaking the barrier and the boundaries on making more money was to stay away from everyone else, okay? I had to stay away from everyone. So I'm just telling you guys, like, please, like, don't go back home and buddy up with, like, all the other guys, okay? And when you go home, everybody's gonna be like, oh, so did you learn a bunch of stuff? You ready to start making money? Forget about them haters. Stay away from them. Remember, you're a threat to them, okay? So I'm just telling you, like, I want everybody to stay together and in that Facebook page, we'll encourage each other, we'll put videos in there, we'll put motivational stuff, we'll help each other. Hey, I'm gonna tell you right now, sometimes you may be posting on Facebook. Let's say he's trying to get on pay Facebook and post, right? But then, you know, Doug's hitting a five pounder, right? And you got him over here, he sells three cars yesterday off of it. And you're like, oh, hold up, hold up. Facebook's still hot. I'm just having some bad luck, right? So it encourages you to keep going, you know what I'm saying? Dude, listen, I have posted before for days and I didn't get a lead. I don't know why. I can't tell you why. I've walked in the casino, I've pulled the handle, and guess what's happened? I've won on the first try sometimes. Sometimes you go in there and you think you're like gonna win and you spend all of your money and you don't and it's just an awful day. Guess what? That doesn't mean you stop going. I don't like casinos, but I'm just saying. I, I, I consider that like posting. Like you put that ad out there and you know, like sometimes they hit quick and sometimes they don't, but like you can't stop doing it, okay? So um, let's start here. Everybody, we're, we're gonna work on, we're gonna go payment close, um, we'll go price close, and then we'll go, I want more for my trade, and um, I need to think about it, and I'll get back with you, and then we're cool. And then I'm gonna have Bubba kind of talk about Facebook for a minute to everybody, because I think that everybody needs to know. Look, Bubba handles the remarketing stuff, and there's guys that are killing it with him, and honestly, it's one of those deals where if you're not interested in it, then you're not interested in making more money. Watch this. Anderson right here, he's a smart kid, right? I'm just saying 19, right? He's smart. He really is because him and Bubba has talked a lot, right? And guess what? He's got some really good ideas. But ideas need to be put into play, okay? And Bubba will help you like with anything that you need. And that's kind of my main deal is that we're here to just try to figure out how to do what our competition's not doing and add another line out there fishing for people that we can pull in that no one else is doing, okay? And it's working. Guys are really killing it with it, okay? So I was just gonna say, if I was brand new in a car dealership now, I mean, I'm telling you, I would own Facebook, I would post at least one car a day on Craigslist, do a great ad, and I would also go take as many leads as I could at the dealership through the internet department, and I would take every up on the lot. And I have four streams of income there coming in. And that's way better than the new guy that starts that goes and stands out front, okay? So, especially in the internet, you can bring them in on your own. Anyways, right here. I want everybody to write this down. 12 Hyundai Santa Fe. This is where we're gonna go box by box and go all the way down, okay? And I, I put a Chevy Cruze here because I'm guessing this situation is gonna sound like this. This guy right here is paying 250 a month, right? Okay, and he says he wants to go to 300 a month. So, what do we put him on? Like a Chevy Cruze, right? We put him on the cheapest car we can put him on to try to do good, okay? The five things that I want you to see that we're gonna go and we're gonna run top to bottom down to the end. But I want you to write it, okay? All right, number one, the, I want you to put these, these five things just off to the side because I want you to understand that when you're role playing this, you're looking for five things. When somebody says that they can't afford a payment, what do you hear? I hear the word afford. I can't afford that. They didn't say they didn't want to pay it, they said they can't afford it. So I use that word afford and the whole thing is about 
is ownership, right? And I mean, I'm gonna tell you like kind of how Frankie was talking a minute ago. You know, he always talks about with customers setting them up in advance, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, there's a difference between the payment and the ownership payment, right? And obviously you're a smart man with your money. At the end of the day, it's not the payment that comes out of the bank, it's the ownership payment, what it really costs you, right? Wouldn't you agree? Like, you can say little things like that along the way, or you can just show them as you go. I'm a person, and that could be something that could be said at the end. That's just like if you put your money in the bank, when the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. I always keep saying that stuff constantly, but I want to tell you this. When we're going to start this close, do not start out by saying, listen, Mr. Customer, I'm going to show you the ownership cost on this vehicle is actually very affordable. I want to tell you why. Because if you're telling them you're about to try to close them, they're not wanting to hear it. Does that make sense? Okay. Can I just tell you that, that you could start out and ruin this entire deal by you telling them in the beginning that I'm about to show you something that's going to make you want to pay $750. No, I'm not hearing that. What, what they are hearing is, I understand. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. And then just go into it, okay? All right, cool. So the first thing we're going to do is how much more in budget, okay? Listen, so when I say more in budget, they said they can't afford it. So you're going to take how much more in budget that they can pay. What does that mean? That means this, so, um, so what are you guys comfortably paying on your vehicle now? This is not at this time, this is early on in the sale, but you always remember to remember what the people said, okay? So how much roughly are you, are you, spending on your, are you paying on your car right now? Uh, 400 a month, awesome, okay, cool. And then um, what was the new payment you were kind of looking for on your new vehicle? What, how, however you ask it, they say 450. So I'm thinking they can afford 50 more that they believe for a new vehicle. So that would be they budgeted X amount more. Okay, the first one, you'll always look for gas. Remember what I said? Even if it's 10 bucks, take it. And I'm gonna move quick through this because I want, I want to move fast so I can show you how fast that you can close somebody on it. But if anybody has a question, just say, hey, I got a question. Is that cool? And just stop it. That way we can move it and we don't over talk it. Okay, after gas, I always go to warranty. I will stop for a second and make sure that I make sure that you know how to sell warranty. And here's what I'll tell you. The beautiful thing is, like Frankie was in F&I, right? Did you kill it in F&I? When you killed it in F&I, was it not using the same like basic warranty clothes that you used when you were in sales on the front end? It's the same thing, right? If you guys can learn, do you guys, any, anybody in here want to go to F&I? Anybody in here want to just crush it and become a great F&I guy? You're never going to make it there until you get great at this. If you can get great at this, you'll make a great F&I guy. Am I right? Because this warranty, you're going to have to sell something that they physically may or may not have used. Okay? Does that make sense? Like, this is called an intangible. I, anyways, I'm not going to go too long on it. I just want to tell you, if you can get great at this, you'll make a great F&I guy. Okay? Um, on top of that, I always talk about dealer benefit. Okay? And I'll only talk, to, I'll only talk about it for a second. But the dealer benefit is basically what your store gives somebody that other stores don't have and you can turn it to money, okay? And I want you to be able to write it down. That's why I was telling you, like you yourself, when you negotiate here in a minute, you're all at a different store. So you're at a Ford store in Tulsa, right? Austin, is that right? Okay, what, what does your Ford store do that no, other stores don't do? Just one thing, anything at all, nothing. Guess what? There is no dealer benefit. No, 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 I'm, I'm making a point, that is, but watch this. He works at a store, and what does your store give? And he works at a Ford store, Ford Lincoln, right? Engines for life, engine guarantee of the vehicle for life. And oil changes for life. Do, 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 for life. Yeah, that's do you think that's important? Yes. Listen, let me ask you this, and I'm just going to say this. At the beginning of a deal, right? So, Mr. Customer, it seems like we found the right vehicle. This is unbelievable. No one gives engine for life. Engines for life is crazy. You know what that means? The whole lifetime you own the vehicle, the engine goes out, they pay for it. Let me ask you this. It's free and it doesn't cost you anything, right? It's free. If you had to pay for it, what would you assess the value of what engines for life would be worth? You know how your trade cycle right now is every two to three years, like you have to trade your car in, right? You trade your car in because what? You're afraid something's gonna go wrong, so you wanna keep trading it in and buying another one. But if you knew that you had engines for life, would you ever have to trade it in? No, you could choose to drive your car for five years and actually extend your trade cycle, which would save you more money. Would you agree? Wouldn't that be beautiful? What would that be worth? It's free, so it doesn't cost you anything, 
But if we had to assess the value, what would it be worth to you? 3000 5000 What would it be worth? It's free. But what would it be worth? Could you see someone giving you a number? If they gave me that number early in the sale, Austin, they said, well, I think it, well, it's free, so I don't have to pay for it. But if I had to pay for it, I think it'd be worth three grand. Thank you. Because that right there, right? That right there is going to be used right here. Now, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Customer. Remember we talked about the dealer benefit? How long you have to, you know, how soon you have to trade your car and you don't get to stay in that trade cycle very long? So this is, this is crucial. So like Frankie, when Frankie goes to stores and he's doing on the road sales, he needs to find out what's the store's dealer benefit. Because guess what? He's going to leverage that. You guys are going to leverage it. Any store you're in, you need to find out your dealer benefit. What's yours, Doug? We don't have one. And I was going to say, what is the dealer benefit that you would suggest? Because like, my dealer might do something. But... Well, so what happens if you put a BG can of oil, right? In a... BG. Uh -huh. So your BG rep, right? I'm just going to make a point. They put a BG protectant into the oil. And on that BG oil, it says, get engines for life. And that just means every time you change your oil, right? BG guarantees that they'll give you engines for the lifetime as long as every time that you change your oil, you put the BG in there. Am I right? You can find out this information, but I'm telling you, that's how they give engines for life. You see what I'm saying? But what happens if you skip a BG oil treatment? You're done, man. You missed a payment. Sorry. That's how they get it, but they get to put that on the sign, oil changes for, or uh, engines for life, etc. cetera. Uh-huh. Yeah. My best friend that I'm going to see tonight is actually a BG Yeah, good. Talk to him about it. Yeah, that's how these guys get it. Now, there might be other programs that offer, but BG was the one who started a long time ago. Okay, so dealer benefit, and then the last thing I talk about is credit cards. Listen, I want to share this with you, okay? If you're new, your managers will probably not talk to you a lot about credit cards, but build a relationship with your manager and then find out that information, right? That, that right there, that's a gold mine. Everybody has a $1,000 credit card, everybody. If I went to this room and I just did a survey on every one of you, most people have a credit card and they have anywhere from $500 to $1,000 on it, right? Would you agree? Everybody that has a $500 to $1,000 credit card probably has an $80 to $90 payment on it, right? That $80 to $90 payment, that's a bare minimum payment. Well, if I paid off the $500, $800, $1,000, that would free up, what, $100, right? When I use that in a minute, to pay off $500 to $1,000 to pick up $100, that's a really good trade. Does that make sense? Okay, because the way, the way payments work in the car business is every $20 is about 1000 bucks. So if I pay off 1000 and then I can pick up 5000 does anybody not understand that? Raise your hand if you don't understand it. Cool? Let's go. Okay, I'll explain it when we get to it. But it, most everybody understands it, right? Okay, all right, cool. All right, everybody, here's what we're going to do. We're going to rock and roll. Um, and we'll use, and here's my point. Let's, let's, let's just pick up a, a payment like, you know, what does a typical payment look like? Like something like that, right? Okay? And what I want you to do is understand that you're not always going to have all these, but you will always have at least two or three of them. Every single time you negotiate a deal, you'll find two or three. So at the beginning of every single pencil, what I want you to do is that here's my paper, and I'm go about to go in. I'm already looking at it saying, Mm hmm yep, my car gets better gas, okay? And then I have a warranty, their car don't. Or maybe my car doesn't have a warranty, but it's newer, and I could say that statistically stating, cars with lower miles, right, that are newer, don't have the repair issues that older cars have, like yours with higher miles that are older models. I can always take that word and move it, even if I don't have the warranty. Become good with your words. Does that make sense? Everybody got me? Okay, so even though I'm gonna go over a warranty close here, I don't wanna confuse you, I just wanna tell you, find the money. Here's a car deal right here, and, and we're going to start. There is a hole here, and there's a hole here. You have got to find it. Either you're going to try to beg this guy to pay more money, or you're going to just identify those holes where the money's sitting in, and he's just going to give it to you. Okay? Find the holes on the car deal. All right, let's rock and roll. So, you got your $5.99 payment. You guys got a piece of paper. I'd like for you to do it with me. Is that cool? 
all right? So like on the front side, it just needs to say $5.99 a month. And then on the back side, I want you to write it down word for word. That way physically when you go home, like you have this piece of paper in your hand and like this is the way you start negotiating. So if the guy says the payment's too high, you always say, I understand. And then I'll ask a simple question. I'll say, how close can you come to the $5.99? I always ask that question. And you notice I draw an arrow. Of, I've done this for, for six years. I Right next to the payment. So if I'm David and I'm sitting in the store and I'm, I've got this car and I say, hey, $5.99. He says the payment's too high. I say, I understand. How close to $5.99 can you come? What's he going to say? $300. I say, awesome. And then how much are you paying on your trade-in? $250. Cool. So you're saying you can afford about $50 more for your new vehicle. That's it. That is how simple this first thing was done. All right, now watch this. That's, this is the front side. I'm going to write front side here. All right, let's go and let's take this and this is going to be our back side here. Okay? Does that make sense? This is us flipping the paper over. Okay? So I'll call this back side. All right, listen, I'm going to tell you this. Systems are what make people very, very successful and make them a bunch of money. You have to have a system, you have to follow it. Every close that I'll do from now until we're done will be based off the same format. Remember I said here, here, here? Remember that? It's a triangle, I follow it every time. What will I do? You guys should already know. Old car, new car, it's real simple. I will always write that first, I will never not write that. That will be until the end of time, I never change it. I have a certain way that I negotiate and I never change. You don't have to be the same as me, okay? You can be different. All that I ask is that you pick a system, please, and don't deviate from it. Because I have a system, so if the cell starts to get ugly and people start to get crazy on me, bless you, I don't get lost. A lot of you, people start throwing irons in the fire. Next thing you know, you're over here on this chart board talking about stuff that don't even matter. Customers are dying to throw you off your game. Don't let them. Build a system. This is my system. I would love for you to adopt it and steal it from me because it's what I made all my money with. So with that being said, what do I always write? The payment on their old car, right? 250, that's what you're currently paying now. And then I write on the, over here on the new vehicle what the new, what the new payment's gonna be and I don't say it. I never say the payment on the new car until I get down to closing it. I just don't want to say it. They, they see it. They know it's there, okay? I'm not asking them to pay it again, okay? When that happens, I say, okay, so check this out. We did number one, which is the more in budget, right? That's going to go right here in the middle. Remember I talked to you earlier when we are doing the truck to a truck? When you flip the paper over, so this is your old car. That's your new car. All right, Mr. Customer, I'm going to write the $50 more. That much, that's how much you said you could afford more for your new car. And that's, that's a gold nugget. Guys, when we're doing this here in a minute, that 50 bucks is going to come right off. Don't take that 50 bucks and forget about it. You have to write it right there. And if you don't write it right there to let you know, when you remember in the end that they said they could afford 50 more and you try to go get it, they're not going to give it to you. Right? Write it there now. Okay? And I've learned because I used to not write it on the backside, but in the end when I would say, hey, remember when you said you could afford 50 more? They played dumb. I'm like, no. I'm like... Okay, all right, all right, that's fair, that's fair. Let me write it there. Now I do old car, new car, and if they can pay more in budget, more than the payment they're paying now, it goes here. So check this out. So I'm just gonna use some numbers and I'm gonna fly through this. You can see how fast this goes, okay? But you have to write with me, okay? So it goes, cool, so you know, roughly you know, on your 12 Santa Fe, uh, how much do you roughly spend a week in gas? Customer says 40 bucks. Cool, write it down. $40 a week in gas. Just like that. And then there's roughly four weeks in a month, right? Yes. Cool. That shows me $160 a month is how much you spend in gas on your old car. And also, you have a 250 payment that you pay to the bank. So if I take the payment that you pay to the bank and I add that to the, to the monthly gas bill, which is what it costs you to uh, spend for gas, it shows me roughly $10, $410 is how much it costs you to own your old vehicle between gas and payment. Now watch this. That is very legible. You can read it. It's nice and clean. I, I, I start immediately going into this. So what that means, Mr. Customer, is that you work hard for your money, right? And then you put your money in the bank. When the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. So between gas and payment, right? 
that's the real money leaving the bank is the 410. Does that make sense? Yes. Cool. On your new car, better gas mileage, less money spent, right? So my car is going to get what? On a Santa Fe cruise, I'm going to get double the gas mileage. I'm going to be spending $20 a week over here in gas a week doing the same driving, four weeks in a month, just like we did over here. And I always tap. I'll take my hand and I'll tap over here so I keep them moving. You know what I'm saying? That shows me $80 a month in gas is how much it's going to cost to drive um, your, your new vehicle. I'm going to bring down the payment of $599. That's how much you're going to be paying to the bank. And I'm going to add up the, how much you're going to be paying to the bank plus your gas, and it shows me – what did you say? Is that right? It costs $679 a month to own. Tell them – hey, $679 a month to own between gas and payment on your new vehicle. Now watch this. Do not pause. Pauses are no bueno. Okay? I want you to understand this. When you have momentum and you're moving, don't stop. Keep pushing, 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 pushing. Until you need them to agree with something, don't stop. Okay? You're the expert. Be engaging with them. They will listen to you and keep moving them. So what do I do? Remember how I said here, here, and then back to here? Watch, I have this extra gap right here, okay? So I'm going to take, cool, so I'm going to take the 679 that it costs to own for the new car between gas and payment, and then I love arrows. Watch this. I always do that. I'll take the 410 that it costs to own the old car, and that's what you're paying now between gas and payment, and it shows me roughly that it looks like this new car is only about 269 more, but it's really not. Let me explain why. When you came in here today, remember how you said you were prepared to pay about $50 comfortably more for a new car, total budget? Right? Look. Notice how I grab that? I grab it now. I'm going to take the 50 more you said you could afford for a new vehicle, and that actually shows me that it's only about 219 difference, which it's actually not. Notice how I pop right back into that? It's actually not. Why is it actually not? Notice how fast I start moving now, okay? It's actually not because the, your old vehicle has no warranty, okay? What that means is, and I'm just going to ask, you know, your, your car's obviously got good miles on it, but heck, if the engine went out and it cost 1000 or 10000 because it didn't have warranty, you'd have to pay for whatever it cost, right or wrong. Now I'm letting you talk, okay? You see that? Okay, watch this. So, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, remember I talked to you about if you could sell an intangible, which is something that they can't see or, or smell or touch, you're going to use your, your, your emotion and push it into them, and you're going to ride it while you're talking. So the fact is your car has no warranty, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, the national average, what it costs to maintain a vehicle that's currently out of warranty is $2,000 a year, just like that, $2,000 a year, right down to $2,000. And then I say, let me explain. I draw a timeline of a year, and I draw it just like this every time. And I say, guys, so this is a timeline of a year. Let me explain this. This is February, okay? What happens is you end up spending $1,000 because the fuel pump goes out. Fuel pump goes out, labor, expenses, parts, you end up spending $1,000. But then, watch this. Remember I said you deposit money in the bank and then you pull money back out? Pull off the pressure. You see, feel my pressure building up? Pressure building up, watch me back way off. Rally. Watch this. So the national average of what it costs to maintain a vehicle that's currently out of warranty is $2,000 a year. Let me explain to you what I mean. So in a timeline of a year, right, let's just say in February, your fuel pump goes out. It costs 1000 bucks. Well, you spend the 1000 bucks right here in February, and then you know how it goes. Cars run great, right? Like for 10 months, like you have no problems. Car's awesome. Do you feel me back off it? I'm backing off. But then in November, right here, November, you're going to spend another 1000 bucks, right, because the heater don't work. So you got to put a heater core in, replace it, parts labor, you're going to spend another $1,000. Well, $1,000 and 1000 that's a 2000 a year. Well, since we're talking about a budget, do you feel me? Now that we're talking about a budget, I'm going to take the $2,000, i am going to divide that by 12 months in a year, and that shows me roughly about $160 a month in a small maintenance payment is how much you're going to budget for an old vehicle like yours that doesn't have a warranty through the year. Because if something does break, you have to pay for it. And if, when I compare that 160 to my new car, right? Now watch, I'm going to come back and get that 160 I didn't use it yet because I got to show them over here that their new car does have a warranty and will pay for it. Over here on your new car, I got a full warranty. So I write full warranty. 
And what that means is, remember how I asked the same question over here? I'm gonna ask this same question. If this over here, let's say the engine went out, whether it cost 1,000 or 10,000, how much would it cost you? Nothing, nothing. Payment never changes. Do you hear what I just said? Payment never changes. So guess what? I'm gonna take the 160 that you got a budget for your old vehicle because you don't have a warranty. And it shows me that really this new car is only about $50 more, $59 to be exact, than what you're currently paying now and what you were prepared to pay. Did you hear what I just said? More than you're currently paying now and than what you were prepared to pay. Do you hear these words? Am, am I right? Am I wrong or am I right by what I'm saying? They were prepared to pay 50 more and then from what they're currently paying now. So I say, and this car looks like it's only about $50 more, 59 to be exact, on more than what you're prepared to pay and what you're currently paying now. But it's actually not. Do you notice how I keep saying, but it's actually not? But it's actually not. But it's actually not. And I keep moving. Where am I at now? I've gone through the gas. I've gone through the warranty. Look at this. I'm at a dealer benefit and I'm at a credit card and I'm sitting here with $59. I had a guy that wanted to be at $300 a month. We're at $599. Dude, I've moved the guy from 300 all the way here. I've got 59 bucks left. At $59, with the dealer benefit and a gas card, you could take that. I'm going to tell you this. Like, let's say you have engines for life, right? Let's just say you have an engines for life at your store. I would say, hey, remember in the beginning how we talked about the assessment at the 3,000, right? What's your average trade cycle? How, how long is it? Two to three years? So if I took 3,000 divided by three years, that's roughly worth about 1,000 a year to you, right? Would you agree? If I took 1,000 divided by 12 months in a year, how much is that? $80 a month roughly is what it's worth to you, right? If I take that 80 and compare it to the $59 this new car is, I'm actually saving you $20 compared to what you're going to give me for it anyways. Take your wife out to dinner with that, sir. <laughs> Boom. Close them. Tie it in. No, but listen. Use that. Tie it in. Okay. Use another one, oil changes for life, right? Let's say you have that, let's say, it doesn't matter, make it up. Let's say you don't have anything. Let's just back off and you say, I have nothing, right? Okay, cool, watch. Take off the dealer benefit. The credit card, right? Let's, now the credit card is used this way, but then I'm gonna tell you, let's say you don't have that too. Let's finish closing it, okay? Let's say I don't have a credit card benefit, okay? But if I did, my credit card would go like this, hey, this is my manager. You guys know when you have a three, four hundred dollar bump, right? I mean, that's a pretty big bump, am I right? I mean, bumping somebody 150 bucks is nothing. Bumping somebody three, four hundred bucks, I mean, sometimes I need a little bit of information, right? I like to ask my manager, like, hey, is, and I didn't even talk about this, but look, we could say credit card, right? And let's go ahead and add number six here. Let's say credit card and then let's add credit. Is that cool? Okay, so we can move through all of them. There's 20 ways to do it, but let's just learn these basic ones. Uh, and, and I'm just telling you, same deal, we're just adding credit, okay? So the credit card would be this. So like again, let's say there's a $100 or $500 balance and they're paying $70 on it. Well, you say, hey, listen, here's what I'm gonna do. You guys have an American Express Express card and you have to talk to your managers early about this. So a lot of the times when I'm going in for a pencil, let's say like he's my, he's my manager and I'm like, man, I gotta bump this guy 400 bucks? For real? Okay, let me ask you this. Does he have any small credit cards? Is there any small credit cards you see on his credit bureau? Yeah, cool. Yeah. He, $500 awesome. $500 American Express card. How much is his payment on it? 80 bucks. Awesome. Let me ask you, if I had to, to pick up that 80 bucks, could we pay off or give him 500 cash back? If I could close him full payment, would we still make good money doing that? Absolutely. Cool. There you go. Does that make sense? You guys understand that? Now I know, now I can move. Okay? Now, look, but if he says no, no, you can't because we're so capped on this deal, there's no cash. Cool, no big deal, okay? Communicate beforehand. Do you guys understand, when you go in for a pencil, if you leave and come back out, do you understand? You're screwed. When you're going for a big payment close like this, you can never leave until you close it for all the money. Do not go back and forth. So David, we're talking about like you want to really increase your gross big time. Here's the deal. You can't leave. Don't get up. Do not get up to save your life. I would rather you, bless you, I would rather you do this, okay? If I was gonna get up and have to go ask my manager about a credit card real quick, and now, have I asked a customer about it? No, because it needs to be my idea. I don't wanna bring it up and then not be able to give it to them. Does that make sense? 
So let's say I forgot to ask my manager for it. I need the extra money. And I'm like, you know what? I want to do something with you. Watch this. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, obviously, there's $59 difference here from what you were prepared to pay and what you're currently paying now with all the benefits. And now that we've looked at the complete ownership payment, which is the real money leaving the bank, here's what I want to do for you. I'm going to take the 60 bucks off of the $599, okay? And watch this. I would rather you back off of it and do something like this. Let me go to bat for you at 539 to see if I can get that done because that right there would be exactly affordable for you and we've already gone through all the benefits of it and let me shake your hand there. I would rather you try to close him there and then say, I'm not saying I can do that, but let me go see if I can do that. And I would rather you get a commitment at 539 there than leave with no commitment. Does that make sense? Listen, I'm telling you, look, I got this guy and I have him about 60 bucks away from closing him full payment. If I leave without getting a commitment from him, your whole deal will go south. You'll come back and you know where you'll be at? 300 again. Okay? I want to tell you, never leave without a commitment. But if you leave, understand this. You're, you're really endangering your whole deal. Okay? You can't let them make decisions on their own at this point. You have to babysit them. Okay? Um, what's up? all of it every time. every time i mean look maybe you got lucky but we definitely aren't here to get lucky yep don't how, get up what i did is how 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 far am i away in my money justification from showing that I can close this guy full pencil. Do you see how I'm subtract $59? Yeah. So what I did is I said, look, Mr. Customer, it looks like from what you're currently paying now and what you're prepared to pay with all the ownership costs included, it looks like we're really only at about $59 difference, okay? So let's just round it up to 60, all right? So I'm gonna take the $60 that were a difference from where we need to be and from where you are with all the benefits and all the ownership savings. And I'm going to take that 60 bucks off of 599 where we need to be as a, a company. And I'm actually going to place it at 539 and see if I can help you with some savings there. Right? So I'll close at 539 and then I'll back out of the office, right? But I have a commitment at 539 in my hand so I can go to my desk guy and say, hey, listen, I've got 539, okay? But I want to go back in. Is there a small credit card? Could I pay this off? You see what I'm saying? Like you don't want to leave. And ultimately, I don't even like that. I mean, I'm just saying, but don't leave the office without a commitment. If you screw up and you make a, a, a mistake and you're like, you know, like you need some help, I would rather you take a commitment or if you're not too far in, just do something like this. Like, hey, guys, I got an unbelievable idea. I just thought of something. This is crazy. I can't believe that I just thought of this. This is like, give me one second. You're going to owe me a steak dinner. Stay right here. I'll be right back. Do you have any idea what the hell I'm doing? Do no, you have any idea what you're doing? no, no, no. But am I right? Am I right? Like, listen, this is what you have to say. Like you need, you, you basically, I've, I've blown your mind a little bit. Like, wh like, what is he thinking? What is he doing? Like, where's he going? What's he thinking about? Really? I don't even know what I'm doing, but I need to get out of here. And I don't want to get out of here on these terms. So doesn't it make sense to pay more? You know what? L let me talk to my manager for a minute. Oh no, you're dead, man. They're going to punish you when you leave. They're going to make you pay. Okay? Say, guys, I, oh my God, I got an idea. And I know that idea deal, like that's been around the car business for a long time, but like it's always worked and it still works. So don't stop using it, okay? Like what works is what we'll keep doing until it doesn't work anymore. Okay? And that's why I say like things over and over. But you can take that 60 bucks and take it off. What I would tell you is watch this. Let's say, the, the, so that's the credit card close. I can cover that 500 bucks. That will leave the $60 payment, right? I'll give you a check back. Because listen, if I shook your hand at 539, you still have a $60 credit card payment, right? Right? Yeah? I mean, because you have a credit card that's an American Express. It's a $500 balance that you owe how much? $500 on. That's an $80 payment, $70 payment. Guess what? If I do a 539 payment plus a 70 bucks, what are you paying? A little over 599 for the two, right? So if I took the American Express credit card payment and made it go away, 
where you didn't have it anymore and it was zero, guess what? Go ahead. Exactly. Yes, and your managers will be happy to add that to the price, right? Because they'll be picking up that payment. Does that make sense? I mean, you're probably picking up a lot of stuff, okay? I'm just being honest with you. You, if you. If you can give, and that's why I always say, not, hey, manager, does this guy have a credit card on his credit? No, I say, what is the lowest balance credit card you see on his credit? Why do I say lowest balance? Because I'm really not one to pay nothing off. You know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to dig for a payment somewhere, okay? Listen, this right here is called innovativeness. Like you have to understand, you have to think outside the box. The term think outside the box, it means this. This is the life of a car salesman, okay? And, and, and I hate to say this, but like this box is where they live. And it's the up to, no more than, meet me in the middle, reward yourself, your wife's worth it, little lines, and then they get a commitment right here. This is the box they live in. And their managers come down and they say, guys, how you doing? We're a little bit of ways away. We want to sell it. You want to buy it. Let's make a deal. I'm like, what the heck? What? No ways, man. Nobody's getting paid with that, right? You don't want your managers touching your deal. Unless your manager is an animal. Look, if some of you guys have some killer managers, you're lucky. Use them up, okay? I mean it. Okay, if I was a closer for you at your store, I'd be a great second face guy for you, right? You could set them up and then I could go in and finish them off. You know what I'm saying? Like that would be nice. But guess what? If you don't have a guy to come in and finish them off and your manager is one of those guys that walks in and is like, hey, listen, here's what we'll do. We'll just cut the deal. Let's just get them out of here. You know what I'm saying? Let's earn their business. I don't want to lose this deal. Yeah, because it's called the scarcity mindset. First of all, your managers don't know how to close. They don't know how to close for all the money. So when you get them involved, you're asking for a mini. You're asking for a small car deal. So if some of you guys have really good managers, that's a blessing, okay? You can get together with them when you go home. And by the way, those really good managers, they were probably people that when you're like, hey, I'm going to a seminar to get better, they were probably like, yes, go kill them, man. Come back, let's make some money, okay? The ones that aren't good are the ones that are saying, man, I can teach you that. The gas deal? I do that all the time, man. What? Dude, I've watched you close. You give away all my stuff. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Am I right? That's my point. Like, you want to be so good that, like, and, and, and I, I mean this. Like, you want to be so good that, like, you don't need a second person, okay? Nobody's going to watch your money like you will. No one, okay? Um, yo. How do you deal with someone that has, like, a friend and their friend thinks they know everything? You just, here's the deal, it's real simple. You compliment him over and over and over again, okay? Back in the day, we used to say things like, now what percentage of the payment are you paying? But that gets you in trouble now, am I right? I'm not saying you can't use it. Listen, there, there, there's kind of like, Frankie was talking about using some Cardone stuff, you know what I mean? Like, there's that line where you know like you need to play that card. Now, um, now or what I could do is I could help him get his payment down. Would you want to co-sign? No. But, but you, so you, you don't want to help. <laughs> Am I right? Am I right? So you do want to help. No, but you do want to help, but you don't want to help. Am I right? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand what your friend's saying. He doesn't want to help. Okay. So let's, obviously you're on your own. Okay. So let's get back to the deal. Does that make sense? Okay. Now listen. Well, hold on. Do I need to tell you that, do I need to tell him that you don't want to help him? Or do I need you to tell him? I need you to tell him. Am I right? Does that make sense? No, because listen, if I tell him that, look, hey, he's not doing this for you, right? Guess what? It makes me sound like a bad person. Anytime you're around anybody, if they badmouth someone else, you kind of question that guy because he's badmouthing somebody, right? Am I right? If, if you're also doing the car deal in the beginning and it's just him and you can say, okay, What's your name? And are you going to be on the, are you going to be on the title as well? Yeah, no. Oh, so you're, you're not in this, okay. I mean, you can also make it. You're here for support. You're here. Uh -huh, you're here for support. And the deal is, is that you have to understand this, that when, we get, when you get to the deal, you can say little quick things, which is, now, are you going to be helping and participating with part of the payment? No. Okay, awesome. Um, I, just, I wanted to ask that, so it would be directly him that I need to be dealing with. Is that right? 
Okay, cool. Now you guys are a family. Actually, we're all family now. Okay, don't cut this guy out. Listen, cutting the legs off the cutting the legs off the friend, you're you're gonna drown yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I mean, strategic tactics are great. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but a buddy, most of the time, a buddy in the car dealership won't go play with your friend's friend <laughs> for an hour while you close him up. You know what I'm saying? The other thing you don't want to have happen is you get him out, and then his daughter, his niece, goes out and says, hey, what do you think of these numbers? Right. He's seen well, but l let's also talk about something else. Would you agree that the phones are the, are the deal killer of deals now? Okay, can I watch these two in front of me? Yeah, what happens if I send them away? What do you think he's going to do? Get on his phone. And then now he's like 10 times a threat to me. Okay, so do I want to go sit him in a cubicle, make him feel like he's not part of the deal, so he physically wants to prove me wrong and, get, and, get, and come back in? No. So I think it's best that I just, I, I don't isolate the problem. Actually, let's just overcome it and fix it. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Now listen. Yeah, Uh huh. No, you. If, if you got a buddy to tag team stuff with, listen, that's beautiful. But I'm going to tell you this: most people don't have a right hand man buddy because people are lonely or are loners at stores that do well. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be one of those deals where I actually, you know, how people like try to like um, get around objections. I like to actually just handle them so they don't come back up again. Right? So what I tell them is like, hey, you're definitely really important to him, and I think that's unbelievable. Okay? But ultimately, right? If you're, like you're not going to be co-signing. Am I right? Cool, so you are on your own, and being on your own, it's good to just know that you're on your own with your own credit. Does that make sense? Because if he was the co-sign and he has great credit, that would help the deal tremendously. If you could help lower his payment a bunch by signing with him, would you do that? Uh, okay, so again, it's gonna be on your own. And the deal is, is that you might just need to use that. Now that's not something that I would ever recommend like initiating, but I'm just saying like if that guy becomes a threat, we could call him out for a second. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and, and obviously carrying a lot with my mom. I was with her when she purchased her vehicle. She had some credit issues, kind of like Ron here, right? And what I ended up doing is when we were there, I actually ended up making $100 of a payment for her so she could buy her car. Is that something that you'd be willing to do to help him out? No. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so you guys aren't family. You I'm are family. Yeah, we're like brothers. But you're, but you're not going to help him like a brother. My point is, <laughs> you could always push it. You could always push it. I did that for my mom, but I get you're not real blood. You know what I'm saying? You notice I use my mom as an example. Just, you know, and I'm not saying that, but look, we're just talking about it. So there we go. We're good. I think everybody will have a, a good play. Okay. All right. Check this out. So anyways, this last part on this credit card, I think we just handled that. And then let's talk about this last one. Talk about credit. And then I feel like everybody should have some good leveraging points and especially by writing them down. Um, with credit. So remember how we were joking last night, we were talking about the President of the United States clothes and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I would just tell you, if, if, if you notice that maybe at this situation, this perfect had a like, this perfect had, had a like less than perfect credit, you know, um, maybe they're a 650. I mean, I'm just saying, is that at 800? No? So the deal is, is there's always up. So always look for that up. And I always ask my manager a good question to ask. This is a great salesman question. And managers close all the time with this. When I was a manager, here's what I did. Every single car deal, I'd say, hey, where are we at? Let me go close that deal. Uh, print their credit for me. I always said it, number one, print their, your managers probably aren't gonna print your credit for you. But my deal is, I always printed their credit. Well, you could ask your manager, hey, is there anything on their credit or bills that they haven't paid? Is there anything that they haven't paid? Uh, yeah, it looks like they had a bankruptcy in 2011. Awesome, anything bad since then? No? There I go. Now, I will tell you, back in 2011, you remember when you had that bankruptcy? Like, that would be my leveraging point. You know what I'm saying? Is that, look, obviously, as you're reestablishing your credit and you're doing a great job, whatever it is, know this. This last 60 bucks on your customer, one of the things that I like to do, let's just, let's just finish it out and say that there's a, a little bit of credit issue here and you're in a subprime market. Like, you're in a big subprime market, right? So, I would just do this. I would say, hey, let me ask you this. This is pretty simple. If and obviously, if I could shake your hand at 539 a month right now and discount the car 60 bucks, right? 
you'd probably take the car and take it home because with the ownership cost, that's exactly where we, we, we are and you plan to pay $50 more and with the ownership savings, that's exactly where we are. Let's say that I could shake your hand at $5.39 a month you would buy that car right now. Why? Because I've just showed you an ownership savings that, that when you work for your money and your money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. And with you, with the gas and the warranty, I mean, obviously, and then what you're prepared to pay more, 539 total budget with all the ownership expenses, guess what? That's completely affordable and it makes complete sense to trade. If I could do that with you right now, you'd be happy and you would drive your car home. I could, does everybody follow me here with this? This may be easier. This may be easier to do this, okay? I'm going, everybody understands, I got this last 60 bucks and I can finish this off, okay? But I'm gonna erase this because I wanna make it cleaner. Is that cool? Okay, I want you to do this. Get a piece of paper and just do this. Like, let's write on a separate sheet of paper, just on this little tiny part, and then we'll get on to price and stuff like that. Just, just do this. Let's just dumb it down for a minute. And let's say a customer wants to be at 300 a month, right? This is what they want. We need them to be at 400. Okay? Here's the deal. That's what they want. That's where we need to be. And they say, if I can't be at 300, I'm not taking the car home. Cool? They've got less than perfect credit. You say, all right, cool, I got you. So what you're saying is you would be happy, right? Notice I'm drawing. If I could sell you the car, it's just like this, if I could sell you the car for 300 a month, right? Right, I mean, that's where we have our deal, right? At that point, they say yes, I say cool. Hypothetically, notice I said that word hypothetically? Hypothetically, look, hypothetically, let's say, and I, and I shake their hand, that I could sell it to you for 300. Deal? You drive down the road, you buy the car, you're happy, you're cool. Six months from now, I just kind of throw out some time, you know what I'm saying? Six months from now, and I'll write six months, let's say the President of the United States, okay? He comes on the TV, okay, you got TV here, and he says, for a hundred bucks a month, right? You mail it to the White House for one year. I will, I don't care what you've been through, I don't care bankruptcy, divorce, medical bills, I probably know why they don't have great credit, right? I would probably name those things at this point. She, you know, earlier she said, I said, hey, is there any reason why you think you wouldn't be able to finance your primary lender? Remember in step two in the, in the fact find qualify, right? She said, well, I co-signed for my sister and, you know, she didn't pay the car payment, you know, but I have other good credit other than that. I'm not sure how she's been paying it. Well, guess what? I would say, and even let's say, look, the credit, the president of the United States, let's say he said, even if you, you know, have co-signed for your sister, right? And she didn't make those car payments. You notice how I just drill it at that point? Medical, bankruptcy, divorce, I don't care. Guess what happens? If you made $100 a month to the White House for one year, one year, he'd guarantee you to have perfect credit for the rest of your life. Perfect credit for, I don't care if you had $10,000 cash in your pocket. Could you pay $10,000 cash and build your credit perfect again? No, because you can go pay off old loans. Does everybody understand this? You can go pay off old loans. Does that change those loans to good loans now that were bad? Or does that just do zero balances on those old loans and they're still reported bad? Right, Frankie? They're still bad. They never go from bad to good. Now, you had $8,000 of bad credit, now you have zero, but it's still a bad loan, okay? It's still reported bad. You can't fix what has already been broken. You can pay it off, but you can't fix it. Does that make sense? How credit is built is from today forward. Remember how we talked about that deal, like credit reestablishment? Guys, it's all about from today forward. Well, here's what I would tell you, is that he said if you could mail $100 a month to the White House for one year, he'd guarantee you have perfect credit for the rest of your life. I'm going to ask you this. I'd do it. Notice, did I ask you to do it first before I said I would do it? No. I always point to me first. I said, shit, I'd do it for $100. i would do it. Hell, I, I'd do it for $150. I'd do it for $200. Right? But for $100, would you do it? Would you do it for $100? Yeah. That perfect credit for the rest of your life for $100? Bucks? Who wouldn't do it, Right? And that is how my body language is. Like, who in the world wouldn't do it? And that's why it works, because I have believability. You have to have believability. When you're training and you're practicing this video, you get subprime people, David, that come through a lot. David, you're going to kill it with this one. 
You say, listen, look, it's going to take you a minute, but I want you to understand this. It's a simple deal. If I shook your hand at 300 and sold you the car, you would take it home, right? Okay, let's just say hypothetically, notice I put that word there so they don't feel like I'm really shaking their hand. Let's say hypothetically, let's just say I could, and I shake your hand. And then I say, here's the deal. You drive down the road, six months later, you're happy, everything's cool, you're about to go to work, you're in your new car, right? Guess what? President of the United States comes on, he says for $100 a month, he'll guarantee a perfect credit for the rest of your life, as long as you pay $100 a month for one year to the White House. Perfect credit, I'd do it. I'd do it right now. I got good credit, I, but for to have great credits so or everything I buy for the rest of my life, I'd have ro low rates and be able to have low payments, I'd do it, would you do it? Yeah, well guess what? You're paying, let's just look at your budget. You're paying 100 a month to build your credit, right? You're paying 300 on a car. How much are you paying total budget for your vehicle and for, for, to build your credit? And it's worth it, isn't it? And just like that would never happen here, it's happening here. Let me explain why. And did you watch how I just wrapped that in? The fact is we're going through a nationwide lender. We report to all three credit bureaus, David. I want you to understand this. This car, not only is it going to be credit building for you, okay, and you'll have your car, I need you to understand that, look, for 400, you are getting the credit you want because we're going through a nationwide lender, okay? Does that make sense? Do you use big banks at your store? Yeah, so you build people's credit, right? And what did they say they pay 100 for? The credit. They can't back up on you now. They already said that they would pay 100 to build their credit. And they said they'd pay 300 for the car. So how much can they pay? 400. Now you have to tie the clothes. Uh, numbers up, numbers up. For my family, for my life, for my kids and for my wife. I level up, level up.